Hey, what's going on everyone from First We Feast? I'm your host, Sean Evans. I'm just kidding, obviously. It's the Matt Report. It's been a couple days since I've been here. I did the content camp on Saturday, which I talked about last Friday. It's a local content marketing event and went really well. It was well attended. I actually can't wait for the next one. I think my talk went fairly well for podcasting and YouTube. So after the, the, after the conference, after the talk, I got hit with like level 28 category allergies. And I really haven't been able to complete a sentence uh, for the last couple days without coughing. So hopefully I don't have to edit this video too much to avoid that. But in today's video, I want to talk about this article that I came across from Hillary Weiss. It's called Money and Misdirection, the Shadow Side of Charge What You're Worth Pricing Culture. And she's posted it over on Medium, and she posted it yesterday, April 30th. It's a 14-minute read. It's pretty, pretty in-depth. And what I really like about it, the, the essence of it, is that no one really knows what pricing should be. There's no perfect formula. There's no blueprint. And what happens is... The new freelancer, the new designer, the new developer, whoever you might be in the audience, when you start going out and trying to figure out pricing, your first thing might be like, hey, let me, let me go into like a Facebook group and find out what everybody else is charging. I mean, we're doing, just doing some due diligence, we're doing some research. And that's what she highlights here and she articulates the fact that a lot of the advice given is sort of bang on your chest, charge more money because of course everybody loves more money and that's like the whole point of this perhaps maybe not really you, she'll she highlights some case studies in there about people who just don't necessarily want to charge more because they're they're really happy with where they're at but the idea here is also that you just don't know what you're worth until you start that engagement until you start asking and talking to people will you buy my service for xyz dollars and you will know you did a good job when of course they say yes and maybe a little bit of when they say no, so you can kind of understand like where you have to fall in line with pricing to value to the right customer. But there is no perfect science. And a lot of this advice is maybe dangerous, slightly to a degree, to some people who are just not ready for that, um, you know, jump into the market and, and the economy and start charging $300 an hour when they've never done this before. Uh, number one, usually it'll shine through during that sales pitch with a particular customer. They might say, well, how are you charging $300 with no portfolio or no real experience doing this? And that's usually the first hurdle. Um, but a lot of people forget is when they start pushing up in pricing, it's not just convincing the person about pricing. They're, they're also going to be looking for that value, but also there's other challenges that come into this. And you know, one of the things that she cites in here is like when you talk with a Fortune 500 company for a $20,000 project, it's laughable because what they're looking at is you don't know all of the overhead of dealing with a Fortune 500 company. You don't know anything about the legal, the procurement, the accounting, the you know accounts receivable, like all of this stuff that goes along with delivering the project. You know, potentially they see a low-priced bid and they're just like, okay, you, you don't under, understand the space that we play in. And a lot of it is uh, building up that that budget, that price, so that you can deal with any of the emergency overhead that happens with an organization like this. I don't want to get into that sort of strategy in this talk, um, but it's a great article. I'm going to link it up below and you should definitely check it out. And nothing is more telling in this article uh, when she gets to the section, and I'll quote, telling an entrepreneur with 10 years of experience to play bigger means something very different compared to someone with 10 months of experience. And yet the advice is often applied in blanket fashion with both teams receiving the same message with no follow-up as to what that can mean for them specifically. And then she goes on to say, and that's why as with most one-liner encouragement tropes on the internet, we willfully ignore the nuances of charging what we're worth at our own peril. And that's exactly it. I think a lot of this advice is just thrown away, again, sort of pounding on the chest, like, yes, we must charge more. And I agree with that. I think more small business owners should come together to say, look, we have to all realize our value. Um, it could mean different price points. It certainly doesn't mean give things away for free and, and, and to do quality work, which also gets lost in this conversation, that a lot of the advice should really be make sure what you're doing is number one quality and you're supporting the customer because a lot of people who are doing stuff at lower price are doing it without understanding the technologies that they're using and the risk that they're potentially putting their customers at by i don't know using bad code or using 
uh, stuff that can be hacked easily. I mean, this gets really into the, the weeds of like delivering a website, let's say. But there's a lot, oftentimes we're just slapping things together, putting a price tag on it, and then shipping it out to the customer without realizing that we have to do quality checks along the way. And that's often forgotten here. And if you included quality checks, let's say QA, for example, you could actually charge more just by saying you do all of these things to assure quality throughout the process and through the delivery of the website and beyond. And that's something that's often uh, overlooked when people talk about how to charge more money kind of thing. So I don't know, I liked it. I hope you check out the article. Again, I'll link it up below. Let me know how you deal with pricing in your particular product or service. I'd love to know below and where you look for advice for pricing your product or service. It's maraport.com, maraport.com slash subscribe to join the mailing list. We'll see you in the next episode.